This is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Two people are dead following an aircraft crash that happened in Jessamine County. The crash happened yesterday. The coroner's office says Michael Murphy and his wife Connie, both from Lexington, were killed. That crash happened just before 6 p.m. when someone spotted the aircraft and then called 911. First responders arrived at the scene shortly after that 911 call and determined the two people on board had died. A Wayne County, West Virginia woman has been accused of harming a disabled child in her care. The reported incident happened earlier this year at the Cross Lanes Child Care and Learning Center in Kanawha County. A former employee at the Learning Center told police she witnessed Amber Seiler hitting a four-year-old special needs child in the mouth. Seiler was charged with battery and assault of a disabled child. It's going to be a nice clear afternoon. We're not expecting any rain, just a little bit of clouds as you're heading into the next couple hours and taking a look at that satellite and radar. You can really just see those clouds coming in, but they're nice leaving the temperatures that we have right now even better and taking a look at those current temperatures really looking at the low 70s right now 73 for hazard 71 for London a little bit cooler as you're going to wise 64 degrees and 65 in Grundy but as we're going to the afternoon hours don't expect those 70s to hold on as we're dropping down into the 50s for the most part some areas upper 40s we're seeing some places seeing the mid 50s but overall, the overnight lows are still not going to feel that cold. Definitely a change from what we've been seeing here in eastern Kentucky. Next 12 hours, though, we'll be lowering ever so slightly into our overnight low temperatures. And as for the front that we're having in a couple of days, well, we do have some chances of rain along with that for your Halloween weekend. I'll have more information in just a couple of minutes. Steve? All right, Megan, thank you. Vice President Kamala Harris is seizing on a controversial comment made during a Trump rally as both candidates try to get their supporters to the polls in the final week of the presidential campaign. CBS's Natalie Brand has the latest. Vice President Kamala Harris toured a semiconductor plant in Saginaw, Michigan, as she tries to bolster her economic message, an issue where polling shows her trailing former President Donald Trump. My plan includes what we will do to continue to invest in American-based industries, American manufacturing, and American workers. In the final week of the campaign, closing arguments Trump laid out at Sunday's Madison Square Garden rally are being overshadowed by what comedian Tony Hinchcliffe had to say. But there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. The Trump campaign says the joke does not reflect the views of the former president, but among those condemning it, influential Puerto Rican superstar Bad Bunny, who's signaling support for Kamala Harris. Fans the fuel of hate and division, and that's why people are exhausted with him. Trump looking to move on from the comments is campaigning in Georgia, first stopping at a faith summit with pastors working to rally the evangelical vote. He will rally later tonight in Atlanta as both campaigns fight for any remaining undecided voters and urge their supporters to turn out. Early voting is underway in every swing state and we are setting all time records. Georgia's Secretary of State says 40 percent of voters have already cast ballots. The early vote is often like the abstract art painting of the political world, people can see whatever they want in it, which is to say we don't know exactly how these folks have voted. A new CBS News poll shows the race neck and neck nationally and a dead heat across the battleground states. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Several swing states are setting records with early voting turnout. All told, about 45 million Americans have already cast their ballots in the presidential election. Stocks in former President Donald Trump's social media company is surging as traders predict an election victory. Wall Street now values Trump media at $9 billion. That price tag has more than tripled in the span of just a few weeks. Trump media is not a normal stock that trades on fundamentals. Instead, it builds on hype and momentum linked to the Republican nominee's political fortunes. 
There is a smorgasbord of voting-related litigation surrounding Election Day 2024. The Republican Party says it is involved with 130 cases, with officials claiming they want to make sure election workers follow the law. Critics of the GOP say Republicans are trying to preemptively sow doubt regarding next week's election. Among the bigger matters being litigated, mail ballot rules, election certification procedures, and the purging of voter rolls. The GOP is calling on the U.S. Supreme Court to get involved with an election-related battle. The Republican National Committee wants the justices to block a Pennsylvania court ruling that permits provisional votes when problems are identified with mail-in ballots of specific issues, so-called naked ballots. That's when the ballots are not put into a secrecy envelope or sleeve before they are mailed off. A new poll from the Associated Press finds voters are uneasy about what could follow the November 5th presidential election. About 4 in 10 voters say they are extremely or very concerned about violent attempts to overturn the results. A similar percentage say they are also worried about legal attempts to bring the same outcome against the will of the American public. The fate of Rudy Giuliani's $3.5 million Palm Beach, Florida condo is now in the hands of a federal judge. Today, the judge blocked Giuliani from doing anything that could diminish the condo's value while he decides if his creditors can seize it. This development comes as two Georgia election workers continue to pursue him for the $150 million he owes for defaming them after the 2020 election. Governor Andy Bashir says today is a historic day as the federal government announced a new era of funding for the state's energy infrastructure. The USDA's Rural Utility Service is giving the state more than $1 billion that will go toward clean energy, distance learning, and telemedicine. Mariah Conjado has more from the announcement. It's one of the biggest investments in our electric infrastructure since the New Deal. 89 counties in the Commonwealth will benefit from this investment. The U.S. Department of Agriculture Rural Utility Service Administrator Andy Burke says this money will ultimately give people a better quality of life. We are going to invest up to $1.4 billion in grants and loans to make sure that the energy that's produced here is cleaner, that the grid is more reliable, and that we have a more affordable energy future for East Kentucky. Burke says this funding is possible because of the Inflation Reduction Act. East Kentucky Power Cooperative will get more than $670 million of it to construct 757 megawatts of renewable energy for rural areas, among other things. You're going to see this co-op transformed into one of the cleanest electricity producers in the country as a result. Representatives with East Kentucky Power Cooperative say in doing so, they'll still be competitive and offer good rates. East Kentucky Power Cooperative will reduce annual carbon dioxide emissions by estimated 2.3 million tons per year. The second part of Monday's announcement is the more than $5 million that'll go toward eight distance learning and telemedicine projects. Recipients include Bowling Green, Warren County Community Hospital, and Monroe County Schools. It's the largest grant that we have ever received, so we are so excited. Governor Bashir says this money will spark intragenerational change and a greener energy portfolio for the state. As governor, I'm proud of today, but as a dad, I see an even brighter future uh, for my children based on the investments that have been made. Mariah Congito, WKYT. Leaders say they will announce and seek approval for the various projects this money will fund. The projects will also create hundreds of jobs, and we have more about this on our website. Officials with the Transportation Cabinet have announced that one road in Morgan County will be temporarily closed due to construction. Crews will be working on Kentucky 437 in the Elamton area tomorrow. Officials say crews will replace a drainage pipe at mile point 1.76. Officials say the work will be begin at approximately 8.30 in the morning and should be completed by 2.30 p.m. Drivers can use Kentucky 172 and Kentucky 589 as alternate routes. Coming up on Mountain News at 